Okay, check this one out. This one has everything we need in it. Now, like I said before, I mean, you can find like hundreds of different versions of the circle of fifths, but this one gives us the minor keys. So here's what we see. For every little slice of the pie here, we have the key signature, the major key associated with that, the minor key associated with that, and then obviously the closely related keys on either side. The one thing I wish they would have done in this graphic is put the minor keys as a lowercase letter. That's more common to see. Usually when you see a lowercase letter like this, it would mean minor key. They have it labeled as minor keys, so it's not ambiguous in any way, but I would rather that see it as a lowercase letter. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So with this graph, we can not only see closely related keys, but we can also just go anywhere and see like A flat major is F minor, E flat major is C minor, etc. So uh, B flat major is G minor, and we can get all the way across. Now it looks like we have some color scheme that's showing us parallel keys, right? G is an orange, G major is an orange, G minor is in orange as well. Uh, A major is in or yellow, A minor is in yellow. So they're doing something with colors to show us the relatives, or the parallels, I'm sorry, and the relatives are stacked on top of each other. So as you search around for a circle of fifths diagram that maybe you'll hang on your wall or not, uh, try to find one with minor keys. When we looked at it earlier, I intentionally avoided showing you one with minor keys. Um, with the relative minors on it because I just didn't want it to be confusing yet. But going forward, we should always be trying to see one with the mi relative minors on there because it gives us a lot more options for closely related keys, which I want to talk about next. So let's talk about that right now.